Facebook ads can either be one of the most profitable or the most costly things that you do in your business. That's why in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down step-by-step step exactly how to get started running Facebook ads and the methods and strategies that I use to generate eight figures plus in sales. Specifically, we're gonna be covering how to set up your business manager, how to set up your Facebook pixel and what even is a pixel, setting up your ad account, getting your ad creatives, what types of audiences you should be targeting, and how to actually launch our first campaign. I'm personally a visual learner, so I put together this Miro board as a visual flow chart to help you understand how to get started running ads. The goal of this board is to show you everything that you need to do to go from zero dollars in sales to profitably driving traffic and generating revenue. And I'll give you this Miro board completely for free. Just go to chrisheckman.org backslash Miro and you can see this for yourself. Where we're gonna be starting is with your marketing assets. And then we're gonna move on to campaign setup and testing, then the analysis, and then we'll touch on how to scale up your ads. So the first thing we wanna get into is your marketing assets, specifically your business manager, your ad account, Facebook and Instagram pages, your pixel, your creative copy and audiences. So the first thing we're gonna be setting up is your business manager. And we're gonna do that by going to business.facebook.com backslash settings. And your business manager, you can basically think of it as the house that holds all of your assets, pages, your ad accounts, your pixels, all of that good stuff. If you don't already have a business manager, you're able to create two per Facebook profile. So you're just gonna hit create a business profile. And then once you create that, you can put any name in there. It doesn't have to be an LLC or anything, but then you're gonna navigate to the business settings page. This is where you can see the people, all of you, the assets that you have within your business manager. So we're just gonna go to ad accounts. And if this is a brand new business manager, you probably don't see anything in here. So you can just hit add and then create new ad account. You type in whatever you wanna name it. The name really doesn't matter. And then you click next. It's gonna prompt you to add a payment method. So you can just add in any credit card. So now that we have our business manager, which this is like your hub that you wanna come back to anytime you're gonna run ads, the next thing we wanna do is set up our pixel. So we're gonna go down to data sources, pixels, and your pixel is basically how you're able to show Facebook what ads are working and what actions customers are taking on your site. So if we don't set this up, Facebook is basically gonna just be flying blind, sending people without any idea of what's working and what's not. So you just hit add and then you choose a name for your pixel. I've already set one up so I don't have to do this, but once we've done that, we're gonna go back over to our Shopify account and go to apps. And then up here, we're gonna type Facebook and it set up the Facebook and Instagram or Meta app. Then it's gonna prompt you to connect your Facebook profile, which you just wanna do the profile that we just set up the business manager under. I'm gonna go over to settings. We're gonna go down here to share data. And it gives you three options, conservative, enhanced, and maximum. You might be seeing either one of these depending on if you've set this up before, but we always wanna set this to maximum. This is gonna allow Facebook the highest likelihood of being able to see exactly what's going on on our site and optimize our ads the best. So you just choose maximum and then click save. And then here's the pixel that it's tracking to. And then down here, we're able to connect our Facebook page and Instagram accounts, which if you haven't set those up before, is again from your business settings page, you just go to pages and then click add and then create new page. And then it takes you through a simple setup process to create the page. But all you really need to start running ads is a page that has a profile picture and a cover. It's a good idea to post a couple of things, maybe like four or five posts, just so when people come to see your page, it's not completely empty. But other than that, you don't really need anything else on your page or Instagram account. And now that we've set up our pixel and it's receiving data from our Shopify account, we wanna make sure that it's connected to the ad account we're gonna be running our ads out of. So the way we do that is from business.facebook.com slash settings, come down to data sources, pixels, select the pixel you wanna use, then go to connected assets, then add assets, and choose the ad account. 
So, so far we've set up our Facebook page, our pixels receiving data, we created our ad account, and then we linked all of them together. So that Facebook knows which assets are related to each. And now we're gonna hop into the ad account and start setting stuff up. So when you get into your ad account, it's gonna look something like this. And the very first thing we wanna do is set up our columns. So the columns show us the different data and metrics we're able to read to see how our ads are performing. And Facebook has a couple of templates for us to choose from. Honestly, none of them are exactly what we're looking for. So we're just gonna hit customize columns and then we're just going to delete all of them starting with last significant edit. So now the important things that we wanna see are number one, our purchases and our ROAS. So this tells us if anybody has bought from the ads we're running and then what our return on ad spend is for those. Next, we wanna see what our amount spent is for the day. We actually wanna move this one up. And then we wanna see what our cost per click is. And then we wanna see what our cost per thousand impressions is. CPM, then our click-through rate, which the click-through rate is if is the percentage of people that have seen your ad that actually choose to click on it. And if these metrics seem overwhelming, don't worry, they're all in the mirror board and the next, and this section down here shows you how to analyze and like what each of the metrics mean and what are good target ranges for you to be in. And then it even shows if any of them are out of the ranges that are listed here. Uh, what you can do to get them up. We want to see our add to carts. This is the number of people out of the traffic we sent to the site that have viewed a product and then checked out, which is... Next thing is checkouts initiated. Our quality ranking and engagement rate ranking. So these last two are good metrics for us to see how they're performing against other ads in our category. So basically, how are we doing compared to our competitors out there? And then the engagement rate ranking is basically Facebook's way of saying how engaging the users are finding our posts, which engagement is a huge piece of being successful with Facebook ads because when Facebook sees a post or an ad as being really engaging, they then reward you with lower CPMs, which leads to lower cost per clicks, which is cheaper traffic, which leads to more conversions, higher ROAS. It's all interrelated there. Then we're just going to apply. And now we're gonna create our first campaign. So we're just gonna go up here and hit create. And if this is a brand new account, what you first wanna do is warm it up by just creating a really simple engagement campaign just to get something approved. You're not even gonna run it. You just wanna create an engagement campaign. It doesn't matter what you put in it, just fill out the fields until it's able to publish, wait till it gets approved, and then you can turn it off right away. It's just Facebook doesn't like to see new sellers come in and start blasting conversion campaigns right away. That's led to a lot of banned accounts in my experience. First run an engagement campaign, but once you've done that, I'm gonna go down and select the sales objective. And now, we want to name our campaign so you can name it whatever you want but I'll just name this one example and now it lets us choose our ad set name Example ad set typically I name it like campaign one and the date and then the type of ads that I'm running in it but you can name it whatever you want now we're gonna hit continue then what I typically recommend doing is turning on this first button, which is your advantage campaign budget. Basically, this means that you're gonna give Facebook the option to spread your budget across your different ad sets however it wants. I typically recommend anywhere from 50 to $100 at least. Uh, obviously, the higher budget that you can afford, the better, but I'm always a proponent for starting off our budgets super low and scaling up over time. And now I'm on the ad set level, which the ad set is where we can choose our audience and our placement targeting and also select our conversion optimization. I'm going to leave it as website and then our performance goal. I want to maximize the number of conversions. Later on, we'll be able to optimize for the value, but there isn't enough data right now to be able to do that. So I'm going to select our pixel 
and we wanna make sure our attribution settings are seven days click or one day after viewing. A couple of other options, but seven days click, one day view is the best in my opinion. And now we're gonna scroll down and this, there's a couple different options they give us here. Number one is our age targeting. So we can choose if we wanna target anywhere from senior citizens to college students to pretty much any age range. I typically leave this open. Sometimes I'll do 30 to 65 plus, depends on the product or the store that I'm running leave genders open and then our detail targeting or our interests are the real things to play around with outdoors and like venture brand you can target a lot of different categories in here that would be relevant to that so if you hit browse demographics you're able to target people based on a whole host of interests and categories that facebook has gathered on them so like if i was an outdoor person for example i might target based off of people's interest in hiking and so I see hiking trails as an interest then over here it shows me the audience size and a description of those people so I'll choose hiking trails and I typically choose just one interest at a time and I'll duplicate my ad sets and split test a bunch of different audiences so I can see which ones are performing the best then down here is where we can choose our placement which is advantage plus manual I typically just leave this as Advantage Plus, which that allows Facebook to choose any of the different ad placements available. And it makes it easier on me because I don't have to go through and manually select all of them. So Facebook has gotten very good about allowing you to just do open targeting for the most part. It'll take care of the rest, largely. Now I go to my ad level, which here, what you're given is an ad preview, which shows what your ad's gonna look like. And then you're given an option to select your type of creative and then fill in your text fields as well. So what I'm gonna do is just a single image ad, deselect this multi-advertiser ad. And so I've chosen my ad creative, which if you're not sure where to get started with that, just start with a basic product photo. The point of this video is just to get up and running and then there's always a million ways that we can optimize the creative and ad copy, which if you're interested in seeing more about that, let me know in the comment section. I'll make more videos about all of that stuff, all the split tests you can run my favorite types of creatives. But for now, just choose a product image so we can go through the whole process together. And then for your ad copy, the same thing. An ad copy that typically works pretty well for me is if you select the emoji for stars, and then if you put a customer review of the product, like my favorite hiking gear in the world, and then you put the person's name Susie Q, put an offer of some kind, like shop now for 30% off. You always wanna put a link in your ad copy so that people can click in a couple different places. They can click by selecting the link or by clicking the image or clicking the shop now button. Hikinggear.com. So in my headline, I put, I reiterate what the main point of the ad is, like some kind of sale or about the product. I normally throw in an emoji because it's attention grabbing. And then in the description, I do something to build customer trust. Like if you're USA owned and operated, if you have a 30 day refund policy, all those are really good things because this goes right next to the shop now button. So it's your last chance to really build trust with the customer. Guarantee and then do shop now and this checkout button here is if you've set up your facebook shop basically this lets facebook send traffic to your facebook store instead of shopify you can play around with that but i typically like sending people to our shopify store and then down here the website url is put and this is where it'll send people after they've clicked the shop now button the last part and most importantly is to make sure that we turn on our website traffic tracking so click website events, and then it shows the pixel that we set up before. And as you can see, it's green because it's set up properly. It's receiving events. And if we didn't do this, even though we set up the pixel before, it would not receive traffic and it wouldn't have any idea what's performing well. We can take a look at our ad preview. So you can see we have our review, picture of the product, hiking gear sale. There's our URL preview, and then our 30 day money back guarantee. So this is a pretty good looking ad to get started. 
obviously there's a lot of different types of ad copy and offers and creative you can do again i'll make more videos about this kind of stuff but the point of this was just to show you the bare bones how to get set up and running and then like i said before you can go to chrisheckman.org backslash miro to get that board for free and go through it at your own pace it includes a lot of details about how to optimize your account what type of metrics you should be looking for campaign structure and setup which is this right here so like for example we just set up one campaign, one ad set, and one ad. So you would wanna set up at least four ads, test a couple of different audiences. So audience one, audience two, three, and then duplicate that whole thing out and test it again with new ads, five through eight. And again, th this budget, it can get costly pretty quickly. So just scale this down to whatever your uh, tolerance is. If you're on a shoestring budget, start off with a fraction of this. Start off with a handful of ads and smaller budgets like you can tailor it to fit your needs but the most important thing is that you launch and then you don't just sit there and like hope for the best you immediately start looking at these metrics and see what's performing well are click-through rates high or cpms low what's in the right range and then you look here to see what you should be optimizing from there but then lastly, you just hit publish and then you wait for your ad to go through processing, to review, to approved. And then once it's approved, that's when you can start duplicating, swapping out your audiences and testing a bunch of different stuff. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. And if you want to see a detailed Shopify store setup, then be sure to watch this video over here. I even give you a 365 point Shopify checklist. It takes you completely from scratch to a fully operational drop shipping or print on demand brand. So I hope you enjoy this.